this is a story by Stephen Crane, who lived from 1871 to 1900. Uh, he was born in New Jersey. He began writing stories at the age of eight. And by the time he was 16, he was helping his brothers write for newspapers. He attended a number of colleges, but never graduated. Uh, while at Syracuse University, he completed his first novel, Maggie, A Girl of the Streets, which he published with borrowed money in 1893. During the remainder of his brief and turbulent life, he worked as a writer and a war correspondent. He spent a year in the West, and two of his better-known stories, The Bride Comes to Yellow Sky and The Blue Hotel, came out of this experience. His best-known novel is The Red Badge of Courage, which was published in 1895. Uh, the Blue Hotel was included in The Monster and Other Stories in 1899. <clears throat> the Palace Hotel at uh, Fort Romper was painted a light blue, a shade that is on the legs of a kind of heron causing the bird to declare its position against any background. The Palace Hotel then was always screaming and howling in a way that made the dazzling winter landscape of Nebraska seem only a gray, swampish hush. It stood alone on the prairie, and when the snow was falling, the town, 200 yards away, was not visible. But when the traveler alighted at the railway station, he was obligated to pass the Palace Hotel before he could come upon the company of low-clappered houses, which composed Fort Romper. And it was not to be thought that any traveler could pass the Palace Hotel without looking at it. Pat Scully, the proprietor, had proved himself a master of strategy when he chose his paints. It is true that on clear days when the great transcontinental expresses, long lines of swaying pullmans swept through Fort Romper, passengers were overcome at the sight, and the cult that knows the brown reds and the subdivisions of the gre green and the east expressed shame, pity, and horror in a laugh. But to the citizens of this prairie town and to the people who would naturally stop there, Pat Scully had performed a feat. With this opulence and splendor, these creeds, classes, egotisms that stream through romper on the rails. Day after day, they had no color in common. As if the displayed delights of such a blue hotel were not sufficiently enticing, it was Scully's habit to go every morning and evening to meet the leisurely trains that stopped at Romper and work his seductions upon any man that he might see wavering, grip sack in hand. One morning, when a snow-crusted engine dragged its long string of freight cars and its one passenger coach to the station, Scully performed a marvel of catching three men. One was a shaky and quick-eyed Swede with a great shining cheap valise. One was a tall bronze cowboy who was on his way to a ranch near the Dakota line. One was a little silent man from the east who didn't look it and didn't announce it. Scully practically made them prisoners. He was so nimble and merry and kind that each probably felt it would be the height of brutality to try to escape. 
They trudged over to the creaking board sidewalks of the wake, and the eager little Irishman he wore a heavy fur cap squeezed tightly down on his head. It caused his two red ears to stick out stiffly as if they were made of tin.